Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well and are having a flare-free day. Thanks so much for coming to my channel. I am thinking of each and every one of you on your chronic illness journey or endo journey. I am behind you 100% of the way. Today's a fun video because we are debunking myths associated with thoracic endometriosis. Now, thoracic endometriosis in basic terms is when endometriosis, lesions, adhesions, or stroma are found in the chest cavity and diaphragm. As we know, endometriosis is a full body systemic inflammatory disease. Endo again has been found on every organ in the human body. So today's video, we are focusing solely on the chest and diaphragm and the presentation of endo there and to debunk some myths that are associated with the disease presentation in that area of the body. I did do a very full comprehensive video all around chest pain and thoracic endometriosis on my channel and I'll post it above for you to check out, but it is a very full video around what it is, symptom presentation, including chest pain, shoulder pain, arm pain, jaw pain. Lung collapses as well can also be a symptom of thoracic endo. I also dive into diagnosis options for thoracic endo in that video and so much more detail in that video. It's a very full comprehensive video. I highly suggest that you check it out either before or after this video. The chest and diaphragm has really important organs like your lungs and your heart. So if you do experience any chest pain, shoulder pain, or arm pain, definitely go check it out immediately by a medical practitioner or doctor because you wanna get answers for your body and it could be something else other than endometriosis causing those symptoms. I do wanna do a huge shout out to extrapelvicnotrare.org. They are an amazing resource when it comes to endometriosis information and they did have a whole section around myths associated with thoracic endo. So a huge shout out to their team because this information is really key and important to keep moving the needle forward on debunking myths, providing accurate information around endometriosis, and so much more. So highly recommend that you check out their website and I'll post their website link in the description box below. So the first myth associated with thoracic endo is that unless you are coughing up blood during your period, you do not have thoracic endo. False. Thoracic endometriosis symptoms range. Our bodies are different and unique, meaning that our symptoms are different and unique. Some individuals during the time of their period may cough up blood due to thoracic endometriosis presentations, but if you don't cough up blood, it doesn't mean that thoracic endo isn't present. Coughing up blood during your period may mean that the tissue associated with endo is close to a larger airway in your chest and diaphragm, or it's within lung tissues that are close to the airways. If you have presentations of endometriosis that are outside of the area of a larger airway or deeper within the chest cavity, it doesn't mean that it's not there because you're not coughing up blood. It just means that that symptom is not there for you. According to extrapelvicnotrare.org, those with thoracic endometriosis presentations in the respiratory system, seven to 14%, so not the majority, had coughed up blood during their period, meaning that the rest of those individuals with thoracic endo had different presentations that came forward with the disease progression. You do not need to cough up blood during your period to have thoracic endometriosis. Medical disclaimer, if you are coughing up blood, whether it's related to your period or outside of the time of your period, please go talk to your doctor immediately about that because it is a serious symptom that could be associated with something else. And again, very important organs in that chest and diaphragm. So please go get answers for that symptom. Myth number two associated with thoracic endometriosis. Catamenial pneumothorax or lung collapses during the time of your period are rare. This is false. Generally speaking, and modern estimates and research have come a long way, but for women that have spontaneous lung collapses, 34 to 36% of those individuals have endometriosis presentations. Out of that 34 to 36%, 25% have lung collapses during the time of their period. So yes, on top of period pains and symptoms, if you do have thoracic endo, you could also experience a lung collapse during your period. Myth number three associated with thoracic endometriosis, it relates to the second myth, but a lung collapse that occurs outside of the time of your period means that it's not related to thoracic endometriosis. False. All of our bodies are different, beautiful, and unique, meaning that sometimes symptoms present differently and at different times. Your endometriosis presentation in the chest and diaphragm may cause you to have a lung collapse during your period, which is awful and like, I can't even imagine, but sometimes your body is different. And even if you have endo in that same area, your symptom may present at a different time during the menstrual cycle. 
Outside of endometriosis more specifically, there was a study done over a six year period to investigate 114 women that had spontaneous lung collapses. They just wanted to investigate what was causing those lung collapses for them. For 28 of those 114 women, lung collapses occurred during the time of their period for them, whether it was related to endometriosis or not. For 86 individuals in that 114 pool of those studied, the event of a spontaneous lung collapse occurred outside of the time of their period. For 11 of those 86 people, endometriosis was present in the chest cavity and diaphragm, meaning that those with thoracic endo did have a spontaneous lung collapse outside of the time of their period. Myth number four associated with thoracic endometriosis. Thoracic endometriosis only occurs if you have extensive pelvic endometriosis. False. This was kind of the assumption that if you had extensive pelvic endometriosis, that the pelvic lesions and adhesions and stroma were like making their way up into the chest cavity. And that was kind of the thought process that was taking place back in the day. But research has come a long way and we now know through a sample size that you could have thoracic endometriosis presentations, lesions and stroma without pelvic endometriosis. Whoa. Thoracic endometriosis has been documented across a spectrum of cases. Some cases also recognize that those with stage one to four of pelvic endometriosis had presentations of thoracic endo as well. So, so if you have stage four of pelvic endometriosis, you could have thoracic endo. But it also means that if you have stage one of pelvic endometriosis, you could also have thoracic endo. If you have no staging of pelvic endo presentations, you could still have thoracic endo. Thoracic endo doesn't discriminate based on if you have pelvic endo or not. It just means that it could be present for you, but it could also not be present for you. Myth number five associated with thoracic endometriosis. All cases of thoracic endometriosis result in lung collapse. False. Again, bodies are different. Bodies are unique. Symptoms are different. Your symptoms range. You may have thoracic endo presentations that cause chest pain, back pain, shoulder pain, jaw pain, and you don't have any lung collapses that take place. But for some individuals, you may have those symptoms and a lung collapse, or even just no symptoms, and you experience a spontaneous lung collapse. The symptoms range, the time frame ranges. According to extrapelvicnotrare.org, the most common symptom associated with thoracic endometriosis is chest pain. An estimated three quarters of individuals that have thoracic endometriosis presentations experience a lung collapse. So yes, it is a large percentage or a large chunk of the pie that experience lung collapses as a symptom, but it leaves a little bit of wiggle room and a window of opportunity, I guess, for symptoms to take place so that don't include lung collapses. Myth number six associated with thoracic endometriosis. If nothing is wrong or abnormal on imaging techniques and tests, it means that thoracic endometriosis is not present. False. Endometriosis can be picked up on imaging techniques like ultrasounds, but sometimes tissues are sneaky and they can hide behind structures and they can kind of like not be seen as well on imaging techniques, but it doesn't mean that the disease isn't there or present. It just means that they're really good at hide and seek. So sometimes when it comes to thoracic endo, the same is true on imaging techniques. So if you get a negative imaging result for thoracic endo, it doesn't mean that endo isn't there. Negative imaging for thoracic endometriosis is a common occurrence for patients during a specific time of the menstrual cycle and when you're symptomatic, meaning that you're experiencing other symptoms related to chest endo, there is a higher probability of detecting it on imaging. Myth number seven, thoracic endometriosis is only detectable on the right side of the body. False. I don't know where this has come from. Maybe there's a lot more individuals coming forward with right side pain and discomfort and like symptom progression. But when I read this, I was like, well, what happened to the left side? Like, does endo discriminate actually against the left side of the lungs or the chest? Like, I'm confused. Like, what's going on here? Research has come a long way and has outlined that left side of the body can have presentations of thoracic endometriosis. This is interesting too, that some research has investigated younger individuals or younger teens with endometriosis presentations, and there is a trend of it being noticed on the left side of the body. So very important to recognize that thoracic endo, definitely not a right side only disease progression, can occur on the left side too. Myth number eight. MRIs are the best technique to use to find endometriosis lesions in the respiratory system. 
This is true and false. It's true that MRIs are the best way to detect endo lesions in the diaphragm and the lining of the chest, as well as the thoracic side of the diaphragm. However, again, when it comes to imaging techniques, it may not be able to detect the presentation of endo lesions and progression of the disease in certain circumstances. Lesions that are undergoing hemorrhaging or the presentation of nodules within these structures in the chest cavity and diaphragm are best to be picked up by an MRI. MRIs are not the best imaging techniques when it comes to picking up endometriosis lesions in the lung parenchyma. CT scans are actually the best for lung parenchyma. CT scans have the ability to demonstrate pneumothorax, hemothorax, and lung nodules, which can demonstrate cyclical changes during symptomatic periods. Other findings when it comes to CT scans and related to endometriosis in the chest cavity and diaphragm include the detection of bronchial wall abnormalities, cystic defects, and thin wall cavities. Myth number nine, catamenial pneumothorax or spontaneous lung collapses during the time of your period only occur with middle-aged menstruators. No. Although the average age for a spontaneous lung collapse to occur because of thoracic endo does occur for 35 to 37 year olds, there have been published cases for younger adolescents experiencing lung collapses due to thoracic endo. One of them being 11 years old, 15 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old. For those individuals that are younger than 19, the progression of thoracic endo was actually, again, more likely to be left-sided. Imagine being a young individual and you still don't know the name to your pain that's potentially causing pelvic endo if you have pelvic endo presentations, and then you experience thoracic endometriosis related lung collapses while trying to navigate puberty and finding yourself and living your life. It is a full body disease and it does have real life impacts for individuals, not just middle-aged or older, but for younger folks. And this is why it's so important to keep raising awareness for endometriosis so that individuals can find answers to their body, their pain and their symptoms. People deserve to live pain-free and that includes middle-aged individuals, younger individuals and older individuals. People deserve a good quality of life. So for endometriosis research, it has come a long way but thoracic endo needs more awareness around it. Myths need to be debunked so that individuals aren't stopped at the door because they don't fit into a box of symptoms that relate to it typically. I really wanna highlight the amazing work of extrapelvicnotrare.org for bringing this forward and this information forward and for providing so much detail and research that is out there for thoracic endo because this information needs to be out there for individuals to keep going for answers if they're not getting the right answers or support to keep advocating for themselves and to find another doctor that will believe their pain and stories you deserve answers for your body and you deserve answers for the pain that you're experiencing there are so many more myths associated with thoracic endometriosis that are outlined on extrapelvicnotrare.org and across other scientific publications on the internet. I'll post some links down below if you want to investigate more information around thoracic endo and myths associated with it. But I do hope that this video has helped shed a little more light on thoracic endo and the presentation of the disease. If you are going through it, know that I'm thinking of you. And I would love to hear your experience with thoracic endo in the comments down below, as I'm sure it will help somebody else in their endo journey find answers. With that, I cannot wait to talk to you on the next one.